Lillian, how are you? Yeah, thanks for calling in this evening. I appreciate it. And uh, so um, I would just like to give you a chance first to introduce yourself and then we'll just talk a little bit. Um, I'm a close friend of Louise and she wanted to say hello. Well, yeah. And um, I'm having a hard time hearing you. How's that? Can you hear me? Okay, and so I'll give you a little chance to first introduce yourself, and then we'll we'll, we'll have have a few questions. But um, I'm excited. That's great. Okay, so uh, begin now. Yeah, please. Okay. Uh, well, my name is Lillian Pitt, and uh, my Indian name is Wak Hamu, which means uh, camas root, and. Uh, I was born on the Warm Springs Reservation in 1943 and uh, have an ancestry of over 10,000 years in the Columbia River Gorge. Oh, thank you. And I know that uh, you're an artist that you uh, you do many media. It says here that you, <laughs> you're a sculptor, mixed media artist. Uh, you work with... Uh, Clay and bronze and wearable art prints and glass. How did you f first? How did you get started in uh, in uh, doing the, uh, art? Oh my! You know it was all accidental, and uh, I've had a bad back for many, many, many years, and uh, I was a hairdresser and a hairstyle instructor at a beauty school for many years, and my back got bad, and I had surgery, and uh, or many surgeries, and uh, then had to retire, and uh, so I thought, well, I need to do something, and uh, so I went to uh, Mount Hood Community College and thought I'd become a um, dental hygienist, like my friends, Barbara and Beverly, and so... They wouldn't accept me because of my back, and then I went to uh, the next uh, program in the Allied Health at the community college, and uh, that was um, occupational therapy, then respiratory therapy, and so they all wouldn't accept me because of my back, and then I went to the mental health human services. And uh, they didn't care what my back was like, so I joined that program. And um, my final year, um, a friend was taking ceramics, and uh, I thought, well, geez, that sounds like fun. And uh, first I was wondering, because every Thursday she'd come, she'd be all messy looking, and she's usually well-dressed real sharp and except for Thursdays. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. And I says, Anita, what is it that you're doing? And she says, Well, I'm taking ceramics. You should try it. I says, Well, I'm already taking twenty credits. You you, you think I can handle it? And she says, Oh yeah, it's lots of fun And so I said, Okay And so it was just love at first touch. And so I just loved everything about it and just couldn't wait for Thursday to come so I could run the ceramics and and uh, play with the clay. So it was all accidental. Isn't that the way it's usually how it works? Uh, um, and you just, uh, I don't know, life puts you where you need to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. you start to, it's just like with the clay, you know, just forming what you need to form. And uh, I think that's ex ex exciting to me. And so, what are some of when you first started? You know, some of the things that, that you were crafting. Um, it's funny. I didn't know what to do. I I couldn't throw at the wheel because my back was so bad. So my teacher Vance Perry said to hand build, and I thought, well, I don't know what to build, and so. I made my brother a golf ball for his birthday, and it was solid, and everybody called it a kiln bomb. It's going to blow up everything. <laughs> and uh, then I made a golf tee to, to, I knew it needed something to to 
sit on. And um, and so I made a base. Well, there was too much space between the base and the golf tee, so I put a cute little worm crawling up the tee. And so I played with things like that. I just had fun playing. And, uh, and then I, I thought, well, uh, I don't know what else to do. And my teacher said, well, take your play home. Well, I didn't even drive at the time, and so I brought 12 pounds of clay home on the bus and walked home with the clay and sat on my chair and thought, what will I do? And we have some Northwest Coast masks uh, on the wall, and I thought, oh, I'll make a mask. And so I made the homeliest mask you ever did see. I didn't have a clue as to how to do it, and... um, it was just magic. It just I just played, and then I had to figure out how to fire it. And uh, I thought, I don't know how this is going to survive. And again, Vance Perry said, well, we're Raku fires. Well, what's that? And so I had to go to the library and look up Raku firing. And it was like a, a new babe, you know, with clay and all this processes and so I made five pieces and learned how to raku fire them and with lots of help of course and then I thought well I don't know what to do with these and so I someone says well you better take pictures of them so I had a Polaroid camera and took pictures of them and they weren't very good pictures my cat was in one and I had one in flowers, and, you know, they were just the most pathetic pictures in the world. And I took them with me to an opening by R.C. Gorman, and that was the magical thing that happened for me that changed my life. And so he purchased two of my pieces and wrote letters of recommendation for me to learn how to hire a photographer. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> not do it myself and uh, and to get grants on how to become a professional and he he got me in all his galleries and um, wrote all these wonderful letters of recommendation and before you knew it I was a professional and I didn't even know what a professional was it's so exciting I mean it just it sounds like you know like the spirit of the, I know that you, you, everything you do is from the ancestors, and it's just like the ancestors are just moving you along to where you need to be to, to get this uh, this beauty out. And um, as a uh, reading, uh, uh, funny you were talking about uh, R.C. Gorman and how uh, your connection with them. I I didn't really know that. That's that's really exciting. And then from there, um, you, I know that you were. You do tapestries, all kinds of art. So can we just talk a little bit from from, from that point um, after you got the recommendations, you are doing the clay, and what, what, you know, what made you move to, like, different... Different medium. Uh, yeah. And so, well, first, I, I after I did the five and, and realized that this is what I was going to do, I realized what I was really doing was appropriation of other people's work because it wasn't my work. And then I went home to the reservation and uh, in Warm Springs and talked to my elders and uh, asked, told them what I was thinking about doing. And uh, then they told me all about Chaglal and She Who Watches in the Columbia River Gorge, the Petroglyph, and and then, you know, and I says, and I did a stick in a siaha, and they thought that was great, and they thought it was great that I, if I was okay, then I would be representing my people in a positive way. And so I had their go-ahead, so I just met the most wonderful people of with Native artists in uh, Seattle, that's when I met... Uh, Joe Federson and Gail Tremblay, and they were all showing at uh, uh, James Labrador at the uh, 
Sacred Circle Gallery. And that's where my first connections came in. And everybody was so supportive, and they all had these wonderful ideas for me to do something. And Joe helped me learn prints, gave me a workshop, so that started my prints. And um, I do small little raku pins. And and then another friend who's a jeweler said, well, why don't you make silver pins? And so then that started my jewelry. And um, and then uh, my hands got bad, and someone says, why don't you do bronzes? All you have to do is, excuse me, one clay piece, and then they'll make an addition out of them. And so it just went along like that. And, uh, you know, I'm not a self-made person, and uh, my whole community were just, oh, wonderful you know, with helping me learn things and helping me become a better person, and it just transformed me into becoming a... I had no other choice but to become a better person. (laughs) With all their help, I I couldn't goof up. That's amazing, and and it's again, it's coming back into um, that old way of being, the community, and how the community uplifts all the people in the community. Yeah, and uh, you know when you when you start to, I know that like when I, I used to do a little bit of uh, sculpting and painting and stuff. I went to art school for a little while, and um, but I write a little bit. But I know like you you feel that you know that thing inside you that wants you to create. And um, what where do you get your inspirations? Where I mean, I I. Well, my ancestors, you know, from the Columbia River Gorge, the pictographs like Chaglal and and the shadow spirits, that is my term for the um, for the uh, petroglyphs that are painted on the rocks and the couples and, and so I just do uh, do those in onagama fired clay pieces and and uh, and in bronzes and so the the drawings and and paintings on on the on the walls of the Columbia River Gorge has helped me with inspiration and the beaded bags put them on the thick Indian legends and and coyote and the eagles and all the all the birds and nature and and um, oh my gosh just did everything everything. All these, all the natural world, the spiritual world, you name it. And whatever I feel like doing, I've just kind of given myself permission to do. And um, can we talk a little bit about, uh, I know that you did uh, some pu- uh, public art up in Vancouver, the Confluence Project. Can we, mm-hmm. can we talk a little bit about that and what that involved? Oh, that was uh, that was a juried um, commission, and, you know, there were like four of us on the short list, and uh, we do a uh, proposal, and um, and then each person goes in and gets, uh, gets to present their proposal, and the person with the best proposal, which was uh, Aaron Lovitz and mine, uh, was to do a uh, welcome gate, and um, what they really wanted in the beginning was to put a canoe on this welcome gate, and I said it, it was to honor the Chinook people, and I said we can't do that because um, that's the way they do their burial ceremonies, and I would rather give up the commission than to do something so terribly wrong. And um, and then my partner about fainted. And so, (laughs) but, you know, you got to hang on to what you feel deeply. You know, you don't want to offend anybody. And uh, you want to make them proud. And so I said, we can do the paddles and uh, make them real huge. And then we'll put a, a 
Chinook woman's face inside and give her the flat forehead. And we did that with glass. And um, I was that was my proposal. And then, of course, we got it. And uh, and it took about seven months to do. You know, we had to find the poles and had to find the cedar and and um, to carve the uh, ladles with. And I did uh, two glass pieces. The first out of clay, and uh, then we cast it and cast it and uh, in wax and then made a mold. And so then, man, then we uh, fabricated everything. Aaron did. I can't do any of the fabrication, but I was there every single day, and it was just a major treat. And uh, then on on top of the uh, land bridge, we have also a uh, um, what is it called? It's it's a overlook. There's one on the land side representing the land and all its people and critters and mountains. And then one on the other side represents the water, which is the riverside. And uh, and then all that it represents was the river. And I did those in the petroglyphs of my ancestors and uh, reinterpreted them in half-inch steel, stainless steel. And so public art is, is just kind of doing the bidding of other people's wishes and making sure it's safe and for children's little fingers and mm-hmm. durable and, and something that lasts forever. So it's everybody telling me what to do. Yeah. So yeah. that's my public work. Yeah. So... Um so we went from clay, and and uh, I know that you're recently doing glass. Uh, I mean, how, it's hard for me. Like I'm just like like you're doing using all these mediums. How do you get to like from clay to glass? You know, like and it's, and you're you're sculpting. I know you're feeling with the you know the clay and how it feels in your hands and uh you know you have to i know you have to blow i think it's blowing glass you gotta sh- how do you shape it how do you how do you get it to do what you want to do well i don't blow it um but again it's it's i'm using clay mm-hmm. i start out with a clay piece and i mold this clay piece and uh and then they uh put a covering over it and uh of this plaster and then they put wax in it. It's, it's kind of like a lost wax casting, except uh, they put use it, put the stuff over my clay piece, and then dig out my clay piece. And so we have uh, a cavity to put in the glass uh, billets or glass pieces into that cavity, and then they put it in an electric kiln. And let it fire for a long, long time and cool very slowly. So it's not really a big jump because I go to a glass uh, studio where they have kilns and they know what they're doing. And we just, I just stay and work with them on making the mold. And uh, then I go when we it's time to take them apart, and then help them clean it up, and then I take the glass pieces to a fabricator to build a base for me, and we talk that over, and then he builds the base. So it's not really changing my style so much. It all starts with clay. I'm looking at some of the artwork, and folks, if you want to take a peek, uh, you can uh, www.lillianpitt.com and I'm looking at the glass uh, right now, and uh, this one specifically that you have in the upper left-hand corner, and I mean, it's it's amazing. Like, there's so much detail, you know, in, in the face, uh, the design of it, the eyes. I mean, it's like it's piercing. It's like looking straight at you. Yeah, and some people say my pieces feel like you know, as they're walking by, the the pieces are staring at them. You know, 
know, and watching them go by. And uh, and it does feel that way. And, uh, you know, and, and as well as my regular uh, uh, clay masks and bronze masks and the glass masks, they all seem to have have transformed that same feeling from the clay. It's uh, absolutely amazing. I'm, I'm looking at your masks, too, and um, some of the material, I mean, like I know you got feathers and stuff on this one. Uh, looking at it, it looks like an eagle. Um, how how do you get the, co- what kind of col- colors, how do you get them to do what you're you're doing in the, the, these? I mean, it's it looks real, like real, real. Oh, well, you know, it's, it's uh, the clay I use, and then I just start out with a lump of clay and hand build them, and uh, they're low-temperature fires. Uh, which is raku firing, and uh, uh, so I try to get the underglazes as close to the color of the uh, the animal or the uh, basket design or whatever, you know, to to be the color I want it to be. Really beautiful, and uh, I know that you have you love all your pieces. But how how would you know, what one was your favorite one to create? How, um, yeah, well, uh, did you have one that you, that you really, I know that's a hard question to ask because they're all your babies. I under, <laughs> understand. But, you know, I, I know that each one of them has a specific, uh, feeling when you, you did it. But is there one in particular that, um, that you, that sticks out in your head? Well, my first stick Indian, I really like. And, um, and then, uh, and then I have this Yupik stick, in, uh, stick Indian, and it's uh, I saw the image of it in a book. In um, oh, I forget the name of the book, and and it was from the pieces that were found in Russia and was brought over, and and had they had a big show in Seattle on these pieces in this one mass really stood out, and I did it in um, porcelain, and it turned out just absolutely exquisite. I'm looking at it now, and uh, whatever I did was so right, and, uh, you know, usually everything's out of whack. I don't, uh, I used to use calipers to try to match everything up, and now I just build them. And uh, this one just seems just almost perfect. And so, so I rarely reach that level of expertise. And so the second one is uh, uh, one that I have watching over me in my bedroom, and it looks like my mother. And so, and it's, it's an onagama fired one, and, and it's a thick Indian. And so, just whenever I capture an essence of a precious person or a precious piece that belongs to a strong group of people, they, they're my special pieces. And uh, who knows, next week I may feel differently, but that's it for now. Yeah, and uh, we th- uh, I don't know, we're kind of jumping around a little bit, but it, uh, it just as I'm feeling what you're saying and, and looking at your art and, and I can feel the ancestors and I was just I was reading the other day how um, for you growing up you didn't really talk a lot about about the ancestors because it, um, it was really hard being native back then and and uh, I know that uh, in this time that we're in now I'm hoping people are more open to native people and that they're still here and that they're all around us and we get to get to uh, know our neighbors. Is, uh, can we talk a little bit about how things uh, as things changed since you're growing up and how um, with our youth, I mean, I'm really concerned with uh, our youth and how we're losing a lot of them. And we can talk about how important it is to be who we are. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, um, you know, we, it, they're getting to the point where they're, socialization skills are just practically diminished with 
being on the computer all the time or on the phone or playing video games and, you know, just not interacting with their family or with friends and and things, instant gratification, I think, is also a part of it. And we have to be able to talk to each other as a family, as a community, and uh, we have to share our ancestry. And um, it's so important because it, uh, it, it lets them know that there's people before them that it's up to these young kids to carry on what we've learned, even though we've had to learn it from other people because my parents were raised, and I tell them this story, in a boarding school where they couldn't talk their language or they couldn't talk about stories, and uh, and they were they had to cut their hair and, and wear uniforms and carry wooden guns, and, and that wasn't really who they were. And I tell the kids that this is their chance to really be proud of the fact that their grandparents and great-grandparents survive and um, can continue to carry on. And I give, um, I give workshops, and, and uh, I'm the leading artist teacher, uh, leading artist, and uh, so I find the um, culture bearers to go to the schools in the Columbia River Gorge and teach these kids how to make uh, tule mats, how to make woven bags, and and they show them how to, to, to make fishing nets and how fishing uh, the fishing nets are used and and uh, all these different things that you know I was never shown as a child and uh, but they're being shown and not only the native kids but the kids they go to school with get to learn this. And they can appreciate the Native culture with learning what, what it is that we have been doing for thousands of years. Absolutely, and that's the whole thing. Like um, When I first moved to this area, because I'm, I'm from uh, upstate New York, and and uh, you know I wanted to know the bones that I'm stepping on, as, as my wife would say, and many others, and know the history that's here and uh came into town and i'm looking around for a lot of my native brothers and sisters and i you know didn't know where they were and then after talking to them and realizing that a lot of them don't didn't feel comfortable coming into town and okay. this is their land and and uh so that when they did you know it's not, i'm not gonna speak all of them but some, they would hide hide that and i'm glad that they don't anymore yeah. yeah, that they come out and they're proud and and this is their land and we need to listen to the the, the first people. Yep. You know, I've lived. Uh, I've been saying this for a long time, but I'm 45 and I've lived without an indigenous view, and I I know that's why we're in the state that we're in right now in the world. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So uh, coming back into your art, I it's just I it's just marvelous. I just I'm looking at it and like I said, it's just a. And you do some, uh, you know, you got traditional prints that you do, and I love that you go to the Petroglyphs, and you, I see this picture down there, and you're kind of feeling the stone, and and uh, um, I've been over to uh, the Ridge of the Gods over that way, and by the gorge. Uh, uh-huh. It's, I mean, it's amazing to, to be over there and to touch the earth, and... Uh, so um when you're when you start crafting your piece that you have in mind um yeah I don't know what I'm trying to say I, I just I, I when I I look at it they're just so piercing your hands just move you know to you can feel the ancestors through 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 your pieces of art so how I don't know. I just, I don't know. I know, folks. I just trying to get it out. I'm just, I just, uh, when I create and when I when I 
that's something I, I sometimes have something in my head and then I just move it around. How does your, uh, how do you get, how do you get your, your inspiration down and, and start going, like really going? Is really, it, really going, like, so like when I get, when I do a suite of prints or a set of prints, uh, it's really, I'm really cooking when that's all I'm doing, you know. I go to Crow Shadow and, and, uh, Institute in Pendleton, and I get to work with Frank Jansen, the master printer, and uh, he says, okay, what are we going to do? And so I I said, well, I think I want to do these petroglyph drawings in a lithograph. Well, I don't know what a lithograph is, so he showed me what a lithograph was and, and how you do it. And, uh, and so when I have, when I can focus just on doing what it is I'm doing. I could just do it forever and just get so engrossed in it that I can't, I don't want to stop. And only because Frank needs to eat lunch, you know, <laughs> do we stop and eat lunch? <laughs> and when it's time for him to go home, I have to stop working. And so, but then I can hardly sleep at night because I'm thinking of all these other things that that I could have done. And uh, so it's real easy for me to uh, to start doing my things. I don't pre-draw anything. It's, uh, it's because it's just part of who I am, I guess. Yeah. And speaking for my ancestors and speaking, at, you know, from them to the public and uh, letting them know we're still here and we have to take care of our planet and we have to take care of each other. Absolutely. Uh, like that uh, sounds like my wife when uh, she's a weaver and she um, one of Louis's uh, students and uh, she just, I have to tell her to stop. You know, and when we, we get going in the car, especially we'll be at a stoplight and she'll be, She's weaving something in her hands, and I'm like, put that down. She goes, we're at a stoplight. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she's really like, um, like what you just said, she just gets going. You know, like we got a, recently got a piano in the house, and she'll sit and play, and and uh, just the spirit moves her. And uh, myself, I'm, I'm kind of, I get it in spurts. And... Uh, yeah, and like you, I I look at certain things and I get it in spurts, and I'm like, okay, I can do some do some things, and so that's fun. Um, also, I was yeah. Um, you've done a few uh, public displays of art. This uh, large bronze piece here, um, it's a uh, I can't see the name of it, but it it's a uh, it's got a you the I think it's she who watches on top face and then it's got two panels on the side oh uh-huh let me see which which is it at the not the convention you know it's right above the hillsborough civic center riverbed it says it's a large scale and smaller scale projects okay yeah, so where else can we we view your art where can we we go to see it um you can well let me see in I just got a piece, a glass piece accepted in the uh, Washington State Historical Society that opens, I think, this summer sometime. And uh, the public art is in Hillsboro. And we're working on a Fisher's Memorial that will be on the Washington side across from the Dalles at Horse Thief Lake State Park or Columbia Hill State Park now. And... Uh, so that'll be finished in a, in a year or so, we're hoping. And um, my work is at uh, Quintana Gallery here in town and Jeffrey Moose Gallery in Seattle on Fifth Avenue in Rainier Square and um, Images of the North in San Francisco and Northwest by Northwest Gallery at Cannon Beach. And I have stuff in the gift shops at the museum at Warm Springs and Canada Lodge. And I've got a show at the Stevenson um, 
Interpretive Center at Skamania, near across from the Skamania Lodge, and I'm showing with Toma Villa there, and so we just installed that, so it should go up on the, opens on the 18th. And so, and I've got a show with Gail Tremblay, Joe Federson, and Rick Barto at the C.N. Gorman Museum at Davis. It's uh, California, at the University of California at Davis. And um, now I'm trying to get uh, everybody together to get ready to go to New Zealand in January to do a major workshop and help them celebrate their, their their culture with sharing all of our cultures. And so it's, I've got tons of things going on. Yeah, so what's the latest that you're working on? I, um, you're, yeah, I've just, like I said, I've been exploring your website, and it's, it's amazing, uh, your ceramic tiles. Like, they're amazing, uh, very uh, detailed, Again, the eyes, like, they go right through me. <laughs> yeah, and so, you know, to, to crisp up uh, for the tiles, uh, another company makes those that uh, is owned by my tribe, so I have to make things as simple as could be. So I work with a computer lady that um, I do the drawings, and then scans them and cleans up the lines and we pick out colors and then we send it over to them and so that all they have to do is put it through their computer and then they they paint them and fire them. and so but now with the economy that they're they're going broke which is sad yeah. and so when I get to I get to make another uh, Pendleton blanket, so I've got to work on that. And um, so I've got lots to do. Yeah, so that's your latest project is uh, the Pendleton blanket. Mm -hmm. All right. So we got about twenty more minutes. Uh, uh, uh we can uh, share. And I just was wondering if uh, there was something that's on your heart that, that you would like to share with uh, with us. Um, I. I really enjoyed uh, looking at your art. People can, again, look at your uh, Lillian's art at www.lillianpitt.com. And uh, I know that you, it says here also that you do uh, custom pieces. Mm -hmm. And uh, is, is the website the best way of getting a hold of you? Yeah. You can do that. And so, yeah, there is a way to to meet the artist. Um Someplace on my website, um, they have uh, getting in touch with me, and then it'll send an email to me. And um, when I say custom pieces, I I'm talking about jewelry. Uh -huh. I uh, I do um, commitment rings, you know, and I like working with the person to. To see what's important for them and uh, and their partner, and so we work together to create a design. And again, I work with the best people in the on the planet, and uh, I work with Laurent Warme, who also has a website, uh, CouturJewelers.com, and he is from France, and and uh, he's very excellent. And he's a perfectionist, so he makes me look excellent, makes me look good. And so, so we make people very, very happy, you know, when we do a commitment ring. And I just did one for my brother who got married, and uh, he just loves it. And he doesn't wear jewelry. And so that part is really fun. Right. And... Um so can we uh, with with again with back to the youth? Um, if if you could uh, share anything with them that we could that they could, they're an artist too. We're all artists. And I remember a, an elder once told me that we're all storytellers. Is just that the current society just has forgotten how to tell their own story. Mm 
Yeah. Would there be something that we could share with the youth that uh, would, would inspire them to, to work with their hands? Because uh, this is all, I mean, you're working with the earth. You're working You're working with the ancestors. You, 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 I mean, anybody that sees your piece, pieces can see that you love your ancestors and you love what you're doing. Yeah, and so, you know, it, it's a matter of uh, the young kids um, finding out what it is they like doing. You know, there's so many ways that they can um, express themselves, whether it's with painting or clay or music or making baskets or beadwork or, you know, just try it. You know, you never know. I mean, I was 35 when I first touched clay, and I never, ever thought I was artistic. And um, and if anyone told me I'd be where I am today, I would have just laughed myself off the chair because I didn't believe it. And, um, you know, I was always the practical one and, uh, and always the nice one. And, and I never did anything, you know, to hurt anybody's feelings. And, and so it's, uh, you know, you never know. You never know what's going to be in front of you that you may just dearly love doing. You just have to make that leap and, and try it. And just try it. And, uh, you know, and sometimes you have to make a hundred of them to feel really comfortable. And one teacher told me, he says, you'll get it. All you got to do is make a hundred of them. And that's what I tell kids. If they're not happy with their first piece, they can just make 99 more, and they'll be happy with it. That's awesome. I, uh, I know with uh, when you handle stuff over and over, you know, you, you get the, the feel of it, and uh, hopefully that by a by hundred of them, that you will find one that you do like. Uh huh. Absolutely, and you do. You know, and uh, sometimes it's the process. You know, if, if after the hundred and first one you're still not comfortable, try something else. There's always somebody who knows more than you do. You know, I found that I don't know everything about everything, and uh, I just talk with my friends and they say oh have you tried such and such well listen to your friends because they are usually very knowledgeable in what they're doing and uh, then they teach you and so you just have to be a good listener yeah and is there anything that you haven't worked with that you would like to work with I can't draw and um, I would love to do a painting you know and uh, but I just cannot draw. And um, but I can manipulate clay, you know. And uh, and then when I do the prints, I uh, something about that process of manipulating, you know, the ink and and pushing on color seems to be so different than doing a painting. And so, but but I don't want to waste paint because <laughs> I can't draw, and uh, my stick people aren't even that good. But uh, um, you know, that's what I'd kind of like doing. I love um, I love to do stick people. <laughs> oh, my, oh, my. You know, I I did do another way people can see my. Uh, and Hear Me is on TEDx. I did uh, TEDx talks with Toma Villa, and it's titled Voices from Our Ancestors. And you can just look up TEDx and Lillian Pitt out on, uh, on the website, and it'll come up. And it, it, we did it at Concordia college here in Portland and they have these rigid rules where everyone has to talk 18 minutes you can't go over it and uh, and it took us forever and we thought we'd use images well they only 
they wanted us to use 10, and we could just get it down to 29, and that was it. So we made we practiced so much, we we got it down to to 18 minutes with 29 images. Wow. But uh, we're talking about mentoring. I mentored Toma and then got Toma working with the kids in the gorge. He does murals. And so he has been helping kids from Celilo Village, uh, teaching them how to paint and, and how to draw. And um, I think that's just the best thing in the world for these kids. Because one kid just stood in the back and was real quiet all the time and and didn't do anything. And then Toma told, told him to get up and really try it, and he did. And he just fell in love and couldn't quit. So again, it's one of those things you don't know until you try it. Yeah, it's absolutely true, and it's amazing. Like uh, with. And then 18 minutes, that's hard to do. I Myself, I'm one of the reasons why I'm really relaxed is because, like, you know, I know like, it's hard for me sometimes and I come right from, from the, the street into here and it might take me 10 minutes to get comfortable and, you know, so that that's hard to do, you know, like to really get it down as, uh, like like that, you know, and... Uh, I think that if I, you know, we practice and stuff, yeah. And, and uh, but I, I like being able to. I don't want to say be, just be, you know, relaxed because I, I enjoy hearing what everyone has to say, and sometimes you need to have a little bit more time to be able to, to express that. But it's amazing when people can do that. I have a lot of friends that that are able to get it right down to that that little bit. I know what we need part one, part two, part three, and part four. Yeah. <laughs> so, but they won't ask us again. Yeah. And so it's a once in a lifetime thing. Yeah. And so, so we, we figured to teach our young kids to, to love themselves and be empowered because it's up to them to take care of the next seven generations. And this is for all kids. Absolutely, and I I really appreciate you taking time to speak with us tonight and and share. It's uh, really really important for all the people to hear the voices of the ancestors, and uh, I know that through your art you express that, and also how you walk this planet. It's important for us to be witnessing that. So I I appreciate that. I just want to say thank you for, uh, for all that you do for all the people. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And it's, it's, uh, I have a very blessed life with the very best friends and mentors. And and uh, hard to believe I have mentors at 69 years old, but I, I do. And uh, they're all so wonderful to me. And so thank you for allowing me to share well, you have a good evening, and I really appreciate, again, uh, that you took this time with us this evening. Okay, thank you. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And this is Make No Bones About It, and we were just speaking with Lillian Pitt. And again, you can check out her artwork. It's absolutely fabulous. It's uh, Lillian Pitt, it's 2 com. And uh, again, thank you. Thanks for listening. This is Chaos Radio. Uh, we'll do some station ID, and we'll be back in a few minutes.